Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky will visit Poland tomorrow. This will be his first official visit to Warsaw since the Russian invasion of Ukraine began last February. Talks with President Duda and Prime Minister Morawiecki will focus on military support, humanitarian aid and Ukrainian grain, which remains a bone of contention between the government and farmers. Poland will be the fifth country Volodymyr Zelensky will visit as part of his diplomatic offensive. He will meet President Andrzej Duda and Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki, among others. One of the key topics will be the situation on the grain market. We want to ensure that any trade with Ukraine does not destabilize our market. This is certainly a very important topic for us, for the Poles. Although, also, dear ladies and gentlemen, let's not forget Russia enslaved us for 300 years. And the first time someone else dies for our freedom is also worth appreciating, noticing and keeping in mind. After the start of the war across our eastern border, Poland became a transit country for Ukrainian grain to go to third countries. However, some of the grain stayed in Poland, and Polish farmers complained that they are losing out against the cheaper grain. Only the imposition of tariffs will save us from a major food crisis, because let's remember that the harvest is approaching, and the logistical capacity of Polish ports, Polish grain elevators and Polish infrastructure is limited. Last week, the protesting trade unionists signed an agreement with the government, but yesterday it was broken. Now the farmers are threatening to blockade Warsaw during President Zelensky's visit tomorrow. Today, if there is no blocked import of grain from Ukraine and the deposit system introduced, if there is no intervention purchase at last year's harvest prices, Polish farmers will lose hundreds of thousands of złoty. These prices we have are global prices, minus, as in every country, the cost of transportation. That is why there are such prices and other prices cannot be made. In Poland, we should help farmers, because we want to have food sovereignty, just as the prime minister proposed with subsidies of 250 zł, 150 zł. As Poland, we will not do anything with the prices except for these subsidies. Although a week ago Putin said that prices are too low and already prices have gently gone up. Among other things, the government has pledged to strengthen border controls, transfer more than 600 million złoty for rural aid, and hold talks with representatives of the European Parliament on reimposing duties on grain from Ukraine. The whole European Union and the world were worried not about Europe, which is self-sufficient, but mainly about the world, including Africa, that if we do not help in any way in the form of corridors or lack of tariffs or distribution of grain, we will find that we will have trouble and a humanitarian crisis. In addition, one of the topics of tomorrow's talks will be Polish-Ukrainian relations. These most important conversations about support for Ukraine, bilateral issues, take place all the time on the occasion of these work visits or phone calls by the presidents. Issues of cooperation and assistance to Ukraine will be discussed. Bilateral issues, including easy and difficult ones, will be discussed. But historical issues will also be discussed, of course. Indeed, something is being forged that is much more serious than the issue of these or other ceremonial official visits. That is, a Polish-Ukrainian partnership is being forged that is based on a fundamental compatibility of interests. Regardless of all the problems that exist between the countries, I am no longer talking about history historical pasts. It's wartime, and it's difficult to discuss this at the moment. Tomorrow evening, Volodymyr Zelensky will speak at the royal castle to Poles and Ukrainians who were forced to flee Russian aggression and found refuge in Poland. Today, Finland's flag was raised in front of NATO headquarters in Brussels for the first time, and Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg officially welcomed the 31st member to NATO. By joining NATO, Finland will be safer and the North Atlantic alliance will be stronger. Now it's time for Sweden.
today is an historic day because in a few hours we will welcome Finland as the 31st member of our alliance. This will make Finland safer and NATO stronger. Also, there will be no NATO troops in Finland without the consent uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Finland. Um, and of course, uh, uh, what we have in many countries is that we have exercises, we have uh, naval and, uh, and uh, an air uh, uh, presence uh, and so on, but we don't have permanent bases. And this has not been an issue so far in uh, our uh, discussions with, uh, with Finland. It is uh, a great day for Finland and uh, I want to see that it is uh, an important day for NATO too. Security and uh, stability are those elements which we feel very strongly. I would also see that uh, this is a process uh, from 30 to 31 and like you said uh, very nearby future to 32. That is that we work for Swedish membership very hard. We are doing that together with them, together with you, and uh, that will continue. From Finnish point, also Swedish membership is uh, most important. There is no reason for neither the Turkish parliament or the Hungarian parliament to make any further delays. They should start the ratification process because we have the support of, uh, of all member states in NATO to become invitees and thereby, thereby we have fulfilled all the requirements. Early today, on their way to work in the morning, Helsinki residents welcome Finland becoming a member of NATO, saying it will bring security to their country, which shares a long land border with Russia. I feel it's a good thing that Finland is joining NATO. Uh, we have been here next to Russian for ages, and I feel that it's good, because my father was in war with the Russians, so, so this is a, like, a personal thing to me. In some ways, I think it will make Finland a safer place, but then again, uh, we don't know what uh, like Russia will do, and like, yeah, it's all like a big question. For me, I think so. Now we are part of part of uh, Western Europe and this kind of big, bigger community. So we are we are part of this North, Northern Alliance. So that brings a security to Finland. To Finland yeah. The event marks the end of an era of military non-alignment for Finland that began after the country repelled an invasion attempt by the Soviet Union during World War II and opted to try to maintain friendly relations with neighbouring Russia. Sweden underwent a similar transformation in defence thinking and Stockholm and Helsinki applied together last year to join NATO. But Sweden's application has been held up by NATO members Turkey and Hungary. Finland's accession roughly doubles the length of the border that NATO shares with Russia. Moscow said on Monday that it would strengthen its military capacity in its western and northwestern regions in response to Finland joining NATO. Former United States president and frontrunner for the 2024 Republican nomination, Donald Trump, appeared in court today to be fingerprinted, photographed and formally charged in a watershed moment ahead of next year's presidential elections. Trump, 76, is the first sitting or former president to face criminal charges. He was indicted by a Manhattan grand jury last week in a case stemming from a 2016 hush money payment to porn star Stormy Daniels, although the specific charges have yet to be disclosed. Trump has said he is innocent and will plead not guilty. Although Trump has drawn tens of thousands of fervent supporters to rallies across the country, it wasn't clear how many would travel to his heavily democratic hometown where automobile travel is difficult. Donald Trump is a joke, right? He's a very dangerous joke. He's been making fun of everything. He's making a travesty of everything. Because everything is like, well, how do I get attention to myself? He loves the circus. But today's a very serious day in our country. It's a historic day. We're finally, somebody with so much power, the ex-president is going to be arrested and hopefully held accountable for his crimes against women. And we hope that this is the first of his crimes, that he will be prosecuted, and that there will be all the rest of his crimes will be prosecuted as well. I'm here uh, because Trump needs to be held accountable for one of the many crimes he's committed. And I'm here in support of democracy because I think he's a threat to it. The arraignment, where Trump will be in court to hear charges and have a chance to enter a plea, was scheduled for 2.15pm local time or 6.15pm GMT on Tuesday and was expected to be brief. 
That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.